What's up guys, welcome to Rotor Riot and welcome back to Learn to FPV. On this episode I'm going to walk you guys through getting set up with a simulator. There's quite a few different simulators out there. They range anywhere from around $5 to $25. So some of the cheaper ones are going to be FPV Free Rider and FPV Air. They're a little more basic but they're only around $5 to try out. And FPV Freerider actually has a free trial version, so if you don't feel like paying for a simulator right now and you just want to get set up and try something out, that's definitely a good option. In the $20 to $25 range, you've got the Drone Racing League Simulator, Velocidrone, and the one that we'll be setting up today is called Liftoff. So when you spend a little bit extra on a simulator, the things that you get for that are a wider range of different environments to fly in, a little bit more tunability and customization in the drone that you're going to fly and some of them you can even create your own racetracks and your own environments to fly in. Now almost all of these simulators can be found on Steam. If you don't have or you've never heard of Steam before, basically what Steam is, it's a service that acts as like a portal for downloading PC games. So a couple quick things we'll have to do in the radio, a few things that we'll do on here, but the first thing you're going to need to do Follow the link down in the description, go to Steam's website, install their app, and then you'll have to create an account with Steam so that you can purchase the sim. While you've got the Steam app downloading, let's go ahead and make a new model in the radio. So, we'll turn the radio on. Welcome to OpenTX. We're going to hit the menu button, which is the center button on the left. Scroll down to an empty slot where there's no name. Hit enter. Create model. Enter, by the way, is the pushing down on the jog wheel on the right, down to multi, and then from here you can just pretty much keep clicking page till you get through it. Long press to confirm, and we've created the model. There's only really one setting that we'll do in here, and that's going to be to disable the actual transmitter module. Because we're going to be hooked up with a USB cable, there's really no need to even power that because we're not actually transmitting to anything. So to do that, we're going to hit page, we're going to scroll down, you can, you can either scroll to the right to actually go down or scroll to the left so you'll actually jump down to the bottom which is a little bit faster. And what we're looking for is the mode, it'll say mode and then D16 next to it. When you're highlighted on D16 go ahead and click that and then scroll left to, to where it says off. Go ahead and click again and then you can exit out. So that's going to be it for the radio setup. Super easy to do. You're also going to need a USB mini cable. It's a bit of an outdated connector at this point, but that's what they use. Uh, ideally, you'd probably want a longer one than this, but this is the one that I've got for now. The USB mini is going to plug into the bottom of the radio here. And then you go ahead and plug that into the computer. If you're on a Windows computer, you should get the little tone acknowledging that it sees that device. If you're on a Mac, I have no idea because I don't use Mac, I'm sorry. But I'm sure it'll work just as easily, just plug it in. Okay, once Steam is downloaded, you're going to want to open it up and then you can go into the store and then just go ahead and search for Liftoff. Once you found Liftoff, go ahead and download that. Once it's ready, you should be able to go into your library and it'll show up. Go ahead and click on that and then click play. So when you run liftoff for the first time, it's going to walk you through a basic setup. It's going to be really easy to do. The first menu here is just asking you which language you speak. The second menu is a controller calibration. If you haven't changed anything in the QX7, it should already be calibrated and working properly. But to confirm that, you can click view controller. And this is also a good opportunity, if you don't know, to get an idea of what the sticks do because there'll be a model there on the left that shows you what's how it's reacting to what stick inputs. So on the left stick you have your altitude up and down or your throttle control, yaw which is like looking left and right, and then your right stick is pitch and roll. So that's like dipping your nose down and up and rolling left and right. So if the stick movement translates to the movement of that model on the left hand side of the screen, 
the sticks are doing what they should and you can move on to the next step. The next menu is going to be your button bindings. These are keys on the keyboard that do various things. So whether it's restarting the drone after you've crashed or you can increase the field of view on your camera or tilt your camera tilt up and down. It's not super crucial that you mess with this so much right now. The main one you'll want to know is R to restart the drone once you've crashed, but you can always go back into this later and look at these things, but it's just showing you right now the different keys that can be assigned. Okay, so after that is going to be some basic game settings. There's preset settings for new or advanced pilots. Since this is a tutorial for beginners, let's go ahead and choose new pilot. And then this last tab is asking you if you'd like to create a Liftoff Pro account. You can skip this for now. I think this is just to track progress and record all your stats, but it's not necessary for this video, so we can go ahead and skip that for now. Okay, now that Liftoff is all set up, the first thing I would recommend for you to do is go ahead into Free Flight. What Free Flight is, there's no racetrack, there's no timers, and there's no objectives to do. You can just go in and just fly however you want. Okay, so now that you've selected the game type that you want to play, on the next page we'll be choosing our level or the environment that we'll be flying in. Liftoff is a really good selection of different levels to keep it fun and interesting. Some of them are going to be really wide open and easy for beginners, and some will have all kinds of different obstacles that are really fun for advanced pilots to fly on. Once you've chosen a level, the next thing to do is to pick which drone you want to fly. Again here, Liftoff is good for having a bunch of different preset setups for different types of drones that you can use, and later on you can modify and tweak and tune and change parts out on all these, which is really cool. Once you pick the drone that you want to fly with, click select, the level will load up, and you're ready to fly. I'm not going to do any flight instruction on this video, we'll save that for later. I just wanted to give you a really basic, simple video on how to get a simulator set up. On the next episode, we're going to start talking about all the different parts that go into a drone. So I'll do an overview on each and every part, what they do, and talk about some of the different options you have for each part. So with that, thank you for watching, and this is Learn to FPV. Thank you.